Hello, hello. I am going to launch this in about a 10 seconds, maybe 30 seconds. There you go. Okay, everybody, Steve Green here, and we are live, live from the uh, Make the Grade corporate headquarters here, uh, Thursday, April the 2nd, sorry, uh, today's uh, episode of Structure in the Chaos 2, how to create an at-home environment that enables children to learn effectively. So I've got a little bit of a new system here. The reason is, first of all, the structure in the chaos too, if you haven't been or if you're new to this, uh, is I started doing these presentations last week. And the reason was very simple. I was getting a lot of questions from parents and students and educators and just the general population. Uh, we're all stuck at home now. What do we do? And uh, you know, how do we kind of deal with this? And a lot of people were, were unsettled. So I did this presentation four times last week. And based on the questions and the feedback and the information I got there, um, I was uh, updating it constantly. So let's, let's just jump right in here. So just just to, just to be clear, uh, this is going to be recorded. It will probably be re-released sometime today or tomorrow, exactly as it's done. I don't do a whole lot of editing uh, on these things. The opinions, the information is basically my own. It is not anything that's uh, official from a school district or a government or any other authority. If you have questions uh, and you're seeing this live, please put them in the chat. If I keep looking away from the camera, it's because I'm trying to monitor the feed. So until I get a producer in my studio here, it's what we're going to have to do. So you can either submit questions in the chat or Ten seconds. Uh, you can uh, email them to me, and I'll try to monitor the email on my phone. So anyway, here's my goal. My goal is that if you're a parent or you're a student and you are listening to this or watching this, and I thank you for taking time to do that out of your day or out of your studies, that this will help you to create a better at-home learning situation. That is the goal, very simple, so that you can take actions to improve or to establish or to just uh, whatever, refine your situation. So again, this is designed for parents and children on home study or virtual schooling or whatever because of our social distancing that most of us or maybe all of us now are under. So here's just some new things, okay? It's almost like every day. Basically, I'm in Pennsylvania, and a couple of days ago it was released that the schools are basically closed indefinitely. And originally it was a week or two and another two weeks. Now they're basically shut down. Uh, everybody is having to adapt to this. Um, it's creating a lot of uncertainty and confusion on, on every end. Uh, I think some of the schools and the teachers are finding their way with this, and that's okay. It's going to take a little time. It's not something that was really planned for or anybody really expected. Uh, but the big things, the AP tests, the SATs, uh, the, the stuff like this are also suspended, which is creating a lot of questions for people as well. So here we go. Here's the goals to address commonly asked questions that I've been asked, I think are in a lot of people's minds, and there are six of them, maybe more, uh, make suggestions that you can immediately implement to take action to improve your situation and to provide ongoing channels of support. So I am Steve Green. I have a tutoring and an education company called Make the Grade. I am based near Philadelphia in Pennsylvania. Very quickly, I have 24 years in the tutoring business and experience as also a teacher for 12 years. I am an author of a book called Maxim Education, which is all about taking actions for time management, information management, daily actions. A lot of the Maxim Education ideas I put out in a live audio form and a video form called the Maxim Education Make the Grade podcast. And lastly and not least, I am the facilitator of the Make the Grade Success community, all of which I think can help people 
with or without any sort of crisis that we have. So it's a crazy time, crazy period of time, and it may continue to be for a while. Schools are closed. People have had to transition. As a full-time educator, I've been asked many questions. So for efficiency, for speed, I tried to decide to put them all together in one brief presentation. If I say brief, my goal is to do this in 20 minutes or so, plus or minus. It's a few times I may pause for questions and see if there's any in the chat. Um, and we'll go from there. So number one, virtual learning. What's the best way to do it? Two, what are asynchronous and synchronous learning? How to create an effective learning environment at home to co-teach or not to co-teach? That is the question. Best uses of resources and how do you get short and long-term support? So virtual learning best practices. Okay, my goal here, my suggestion here is number one, if you have a school-based circumstance, you have schools that's providing your child with work, I think that would create your structure. So you're going to have assignments for different classes, history, English, math, science, so on and so on, language. I would use that to create your structure. Some of it's going to be short term. They get assigned something on Monday. It's due Tuesday, maybe Wednesday. Some may be longer term. Maybe it's a paper. Maybe it's a project. I am seeing a lot of both. I'm seeing situations where there's things people have to do that day. They have to hand it in. Uh, I'm seeing situations where there's longer term projects being developed. Uh, so it's a matter of planning for both. There's things you're going to have to do every day. There's things you're going to have to do partially every day. Uh, the baseball project was something I talked a lot about last week, which was a, more of a self-directed project where somebody had to take various disciplines, English, reading, science, math, history, put them all together into one big project. So for the purpose of today, I'm going to kind of put that off and, and refer you to past recordings, but it's an excellent idea if you still have independent learning going on. Either way, as a parent, Try to make this a fun and interesting experience for your children. Try to give them input. And I'll talk about this more briefly. Obviously, an older child, older element, uh, elementary, maybe middle school, high school, should have more independence. They should have more ability to control what their situation is. I would use technology in this when it's appropriate. In other words, I would use it at the same ratio as it being used in school. That's what I found works the best would be if, if children have tablets or Chromebooks or computers, and that's how they're getting their information anyway, I would just stay with that. That doesn't mean textbooks or notebooks or taking notes or paper and pencil are not excellent traditional tools, but the technology right now is really leading the way. When you can, I would use the school-based curriculum as a guide, as I talked about already, but you can also be creative. This is a time to try to learn about other things. Maybe you've always wanted to do some research on a topic. This, I think you're going to have the time and the flexibility to do that as well. So in summary, virtual learning, the my suggestion is that plan. Look at the work you have to do. Plan it out. Manage your time. Manage your information. And that go, is really, really the next one. Let me jump ahead. So asynchronous versus synchronous learning. Asynchronous means it's not at the same time. So easy example, I am recording this video live. If you're watching it live, that is synchronous learning. You are seeing it as it is happening. There's an ability for some interactions to occur. Specifically, you can put some comments in, ask some questions, things like this. Asynchronous, this is done. It's recorded. Maybe you're watching it today, tomorrow, in a week. And there's an inability to interact that way. So let me get let me jump into this. And maybe next time I'm going to shift these two slides. How to create an effective learning environment at home. So if we go back to slide one very quickly, this is kind of what you have to do. All right. And then here, this is how we're going to do it. So number one, physically, you need to have a good working environment to get your work done. This is no different than it ever was. It needs to be quiet. It needs to be ability to focus. I, I always use the example. I wouldn't suggest doing homework after dinner at the kitchen table. Everybody's cleaning up. The television's on. People are running around, so and so. So establish a good physical environment. Number two, time-wise, temporally. Treat this like, like historically regular homework time. And this is independent of the age 
of your child. Okay. I would suggest um, setting time, setting boundaries from 10 in the morning to noon. That's school time. Take a break for lunch. Noon or uh, one to three. That's school time. Take a break. Five to six. Homework time. Dinner. Seven to eight or whatever. Finish your homework. Technology. I'm going to repeat what I said before. I would use it at the same amount or the same sort of proportionality that it was being used already in school. Record keeping and accountability as a parent, and the school can do this to a degree as they track assignments that are turned in or they're grading or, or, they're, or they're taking attendance or whatever. Uh, but it's your job. I know you got work. I know you're trying to work at home. I know this is new territory, but I still think you want to establish that time structure I talked about already and keep to it. When it's time to get to work, you got to make sure people are getting to work and you got to hold your kids accountable. All right. Independence versus dependence. And really, this is an extension of the last one. The older the child, the more independent they should be able to work. But we still need as parents to make sure that is happening. So let me pause for a second, see if there's any questions in the live feed. Um, I got one question it was the same question that was asked the other day which is I, my children are very spread out in age, third grader, seventh grader, ninth grader. Okay. What do I do? A um, couple things. One is you got to, this, the more kids you have and the more uh, heterogeneous their ages are, the more you really need what's on the slide right now. Good physical structure, good separation. Where's the ninth grader working? Where's the seventh grader working? Where's the third grader working? When are they doing it? Probably easy if they all do it at once. But you could also have a situation, which I suggested on Tuesday, uh, where the older ones might be able to help the younger ones. So maybe the seventh grader and the eleventh grader, or not, sorry, ninth grader, can help the third grader, and the older ninth grader can help the seventh grader. It's almost like when your kids are little and the older ones help them to get dressed, <laughs> help them get in and out of the car, things like that. But but take advantage of that. I mean, this is this is you know with all the academics going on, this is also a time when our families are clustered together. Let me see if there's any other questions. Not yet. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, okay, let's move ahead. Co-teaching or not to co-teach. What is co-teaching? It's been asked a lot. Uh, it's, it's simple. It's when more than one person or more than one process does the instruction. It's not a new thing. And it's not a good or bad thing. And it happens all the time in schools. Um, in this case, which is new, is that parents have become de facto co-teachers, and in some case, the primary teachers, possibly. So what's the role of the parent? I've already addressed this. I'm just going to say, anything, say the same thing again. Establish physical structure, establish time structure, and maintain accountability. Okay? I'll just go back here really quickly, right here. Physical structure, time structure, and maintain accountability. I think the role of the school is the same as it's always been, to provide the curriculum, provide the assignments, and divide the instruction. It's being done differently right now, and that's to be expected. Uh, different teachers have different ways they're doing it. I've worked with a lot of kids this week, and I'm seeing very, very disparate uh, presentations. Some teachers are doing videos. Some are just giving worksheets. Some are referring people to other videos. Uh, but, but the way this is being projected is going to vary very differently. It may even vary a lot if for a child who has multiple teachers, like a high school or middle school teacher. Short term, I think it's, again, I'm going to keep coming back to the same thing. Establish the structures. I really can't overemphasize that because the short term establishment of structure and physical structure and time structure and time management, information management, which are huge maximum education tenets, are going to, in the end, establish really good long-term things. But expectation-wise, I think it's very simple. Whatever needs to get done that day has to be defined. Here's my work for today. I got to get it done. Some of that work may be projected out for longer term work that needs to be done later, like studying for a test or writing a paper. Those are more of the long term expectations. Resources, best uses. Um, when this first broke, uh, at this point, almost two and a half weeks ago, this was by far the biggest question. I don't have anything as a parent. I don't have any information. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to start. What can I do? Uh, that's been reined in as, at least in Pennsylvania uh, and in New Jersey, I believe, where I have students, 
uh, the schools are now in a virtual teaching mode. So there, there's a structure that's being established, at least what has to get done wise. But there are a lot of it, resources for online information. And there always have been. Easiest one, pick up your phone and search it. Go on your computer and search it. The internet is, is the biggest source of information that's ever existed. Uh, not just for education, but just across the board. So it can be taken advantage of it that way. But like everything else, you have to be picky. You have to look at what is helping and what is not helping and what is supporting your education and what isn't. Uh, you also have self-created and school provided. Now, self-created would be something like, okay, we want to do a project and we want to learn about uh, spiders. Um, school provided would be the curriculum that the schools are providing. And then again, and this is becoming a little repetitive, but it's the same idea. You have core space, which would be the school's provision. But also, if the school isn't providing it, you could just pick up where you left off when there was a disruption of the education. Ad hoc would be just learning something that is related to that. So maybe you're in a biology class and the last thing you learned was DNA or something like this, but you wanted on your own to learn about DNA more. The random, I have a couple families I'm working with. They're just saying, hey, uh, we're just going to do kind of almost like a random search and pick a topic and just learn about it. Kind of a joy of learning sort of thing. Last thing is free versus paid. There is a lot, a lot, a lot of free resource on the Internet. Some of it's excellent. Some of it's not. Uh, I would probably try to exhaust that before you start to subscribe to services or paid curriculum. OK, that that's my opinion. And how do you get support? OK, short term. This has to be a little bit more internal. But as a parent, as essentially the home instructor, you got to set day to day goals. You got to keep a timetable. You got to make sure the assessments are getting done and establish checkpoints and feedback loops. Just because work's getting done doesn't mean it's getting done well. And that's independent of any disruption of education. It's just part of what happens. It, anybody can zip through homework and, you know, just do it in a cursory way. I had a person I was working with last night uh, who had 15 math problems to do and literally showed me their homework. And it was 1 to 15 and then 15 answers. No work, uh, no, nothing, no support to what they did. So there's a quality piece here as well. Long term. You can seek out uh, professional support. You know, I do have a tutoring company. I am happy to work with any families and students. Uh, you could also reach out to the school and the teachers, however they're doing support right now. Uh, I'm not it's certain. I think it's going to be case by case. All kinds of social communities out there. I get invited to join at least two or three a day, uh, locally, regionally, nationally, somewhere basically just local people trying to say, hey, this store's open, this store's got toilet paper, which sounds goofy, but that's where we're at right now. Or this store is delivering food, or this restaurant is open for takeout. Uh, but it's the same thing with education. Uh, I also have my own success community and podcast, and I, I really honestly believe, and I'm going to do a very short commercial for that, this is extremely timely information that I believe can help everyone in there. So get back with me and I can give you more information about that. I'm going to do a quick check for questions. Uh, hey, you're welcome. I've got a couple of people thanking me. You're welcome. Listen, I am doing this uh, unselfishly to try to help people and parents because as a parent, I'm in the same situation with my kids now uh, and, and just aren't accustomed to doing this. And it gets exacerbated because they're trying to work at home. So they're trying to figure out that side of it and, and they need quiet and they need an isolated place to work, but they also have to be parents at the same time. So it's challenging. No question. Uh, let me check the questions over here. Um, somebody has kind of a technical question. So I'm just going to throw it up here, but probably address it offline is uh, how my student doesn't know how to enter her work. So what they're basically saying is that the student's doing work, but doesn't know how to show that they've done it. Uh, a lot of schools are going to have online submissions or the software, if you can work on it or type on it or actually with a stylus or something, write on it. Um, sometimes you're going to have to take pictures of it and upload it. Uh, I'm, I'm going to defer and say, if you can get with me offline, I can look at your individual situation and see how I can help you. Um, 
Another question about timing. Uh, how long do you think a student should be spending on school nowadays? Um, I, I don't know an exact answer to that. I think the younger the child, probably less, but that's always the case. You know, typically a child's in school six or seven hours. You know, they're going to come home depending on their age or the, you know, the, um, the, the, the complexity of their classes. They may have more or less homework. I, I think reasonably what I'm counseling people to do is to break it up into blocks. An hour or two block in the morning, hour or two block in the afternoon, unless it's dictated by the school. I do have students I'm working with who have to check in at nine in the morning and click through different classes until one o'clock. Then they go and do their independent work. Um, so uh, I, I would do it that way. I'm, I'm just going to say, just to give an answer, one or two hours in block one, one or two hours in block two, and then maybe two blocks for homework. Which and I think as a parent and as a student, you need to decide how long they're going to be. All right, we have no more questions. This is coming right up on my self-imposed time limit. Here's some follow-up. If you would like to get a hold of me, you can leave comments in the watch comment area. I'm getting a few. I appreciate it. You can email me offline. The plan is to do some variation of this presentation every Tuesday at ten. Thursday at noon. I've toyed with doing one at night, but it just doesn't seem that that time works as well. Uh, I also have live office hours and daily support meetups. Those are typically more on uh, software like Zoom. You can email me. I'll let you know when they are. I'm going to start to publicize them. Uh, if you want, please follow me or connect with me on social at Make the Grade or Steve Green. Um, it is all on the Facebook and Instagram and all those wonderful things. And I would encourage people consider getting involved in my success community and listening to my podcast. They are both completely dedicated to giving parents and students actions to help them with academic excellence. That is my goal. So I want to thank everybody for coming on and investing 20, 30 minutes here today. Stay home, stay safe. Uh, let's all ride this out and hopefully come out stronger on the other side. I'm just going to do one last check for questions. Uh, I just, uh, listen, you're welcome. I'm getting uh, thank yous. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, hopefully see everybody back here next Tuesday. If you have questions, you want something added or maybe even deleted from the presentation, just let me know. Um, let me just go back over here very quickly. So I appreciate it. Um, again, thank you for your comments. Thank you for your input. My goal in closing is very simple. I would like everyone who's seen this to be able to take actions, do something they didn't know how to do or weren't confident doing uh, 15, whatever, 20 minutes ago. The more people that see this, I honestly believe the more people are going to be benefiting from it. So if you can share this, Share the link with your friends. I'd appreciate it. Uh, let me check one last thing. Didn't uh, bounce every day, stress. Yep. Okay. I'm going to wrap it up here. I appreciate all your comments and your input. Um, there's there's some uh, some good things over there as well. I'm sorry if it got a little disjointed towards the end here, but uh, there's some suggestions there, and I'm going to include them in here. But just to real real fast summarize, establish a physical structure, establish a time structure, break up your things into chunks of time, hour, two hour, hour and a half, half hour, make a dedicated time, and roll from there. If I can help you, please reach out, Steve Green. Make the grade, and I will see you next time. Stay safe.